Hello my dear students today we are going to study execution of complete instruction in the subject computer organization and architecture my name is himanshi choudhary department computer science and engineering kite group of institution let's get started here are some prerequisites that you must have gone through the video instruction cycle and sub cycle next let's see the fundamental concept that we are going to use for this video as we are going to study about processor and uh, how the instruction are fed decoded and executed so let's see the fundamental concept processor fetches one instruction at a time and perform the operation specified now you must know this that processor always reads only one instruction at a time and perform the operation it specifies then instructions are fetched from successive memory locations until a branch or a jump instruction is encountered all instructions are sequenced it means if first at 1000 location then next will be at 1004 location because it may be a four byte instruction but these instructions are successive only if there is no branch or jump instruction there then processor keep tracks of the address of the memory location containing the next instruction to be fetched using program counter now processor always knows that what will be the next instruction and the address of next instruction is stored in the register called program counter and the current instruction is written in instruction register next we will see the execution of an instruction first step fetch the contents of the memory location pointed to by the program counter it means this step is saying that pc must be having some address and at that address we have to fetch the content the content of this location are loaded into ir that is instruction register this is the fetch phase we have already seen this in the previous video of instruction cycle it means whatever the content of program counter is that is loaded to instruction register assuming that the memory is byte addressable increment the content of the program counter by 4 so to read the next instruction in the program we will increment the program counter by 4 now it will give the next instruction to be executed next then carry out the action specified by the instruction in the ir okay so this step is saying that whatever the content now ir it means instruction register is having that has to be executed now this is the execution phase next now we will see the single bus organization of the data path inside a processor it means how with the help of single bus organization the data is transferred among the uh, components of the processor you already know some of the components of this processor that is this is program counter the content of program counter is sent to mar now on that address whatever content is there with the help of address lines the from this memory the data is read and that is transferred to mdr that is memory data register now the content of this pc is now in mdr and that is transferred to instruction register so this you have seen in the fetch cycle that the content of program counter is transferred to instruction register so this is the way from here it will transfer to mar with the help of memory bus it will be transferred to mdr then later on it will be transferred to instruction register now here will be having the content of the instruction then with the help of control logic and decoders we can decode this instruction and later on on this bus we can execute this instruction this you can see are the general purpose register that is r1 r2 and more now here we can give one input to marks and second input here we can give now with the help of marks here we can give one input to alu 
and one more can be given from here so this is the alu here we are having some of the operations here we are having two inputs this is one output on these two inputs any of the operation may occur then result is stored in this temporary register then later on it can travel through here and it can be stored on whatever register destined so this is how single bus organization of the data path inside processor works let's see one example for this so we will see one example of add r3 r1 now here these brackets are important why these brackets are important these brackets are telling that this r3 is an indirect addressing it means this r1 is having the value it means at this address we are having value but r3 is storing an address on that address the value is there it means we have to travel to other address then from that address we have to read the value it means this is indirect addressing so the steps are fetch the instruction set the first operand it means we need to read this value then perform the addition after reading the first operand we are having second operand already we can perform the addition so addition will be performed and store the answer on r1 it means later on the result will be stored on the r1 register now let's see this execution of complete cycle with the help of diagram and with the help of some control sequence so let's start now the program counter register will be having some address and at that address there will be some content it means that instruction to be executed so first of all what we need to do pc out this mean that on this processor diagram this pc will be having some address and that has to be given somewhere where M A R in it means one thousand from here will go to M A R, and this M A R is having a address now. With the help of address lines and the memory bus, from this address the content is read, okay, and that uh, content will be given to M D R now. Let's hold here. Why? Because now P C has given the address. now pc has to move to next instruction for that the control sequence says that select 4 it means this address will go here in b and here 4 is selected now in marks only one output is given as out output it means 4 will come here and the address of pc will be given here it means we are having 1000 here and 4 here with the help of this alu add operation is performed and the next address for pc is evaluated here the output will be 1000 plus 4 that is 1004 and that will be stored in a temporary register that is z so see here it is written z in now we are having the next address for pc z it means that uh, this temporary register will give this output from here to pc in it means now 1004 will be stored in pc and that will be the address for the next instruction wmfc is the waiting for memory function to complete it means all of these function when completed it will move to next instruction now the new value for pc is here that is 1004 and it will give the 1000 to mar and that will be evaluated that what content is there and the content is given to mdr now mdr out will happen it means the content which mdr read now will be given to ir that is instruction register it means the content which was at the address of program counter now is with the instruction register now this instruction register is connected with instruction decoder and control logic it means that this control unit will decode this instruction and will get to know that what to do next now 
let's suppose that this is this is representing an addresses so at the address 1000 which was given by pc is having the instruction add r3 r1 this will be decoded with the help of this control unit now it will see that it has to add r3 and r1 but r3 is the indirect address and R1 is the direct address. So the value of R1 will be here. These are general purpose register. But for R3, it has to move the address to MAR register. And from that address, with the help of address lines and memory bus, the data will be read that what is the data or on that address R3 is having. The value will be given to MDR then. Let's see the control sequence. So R1 is having the value 10 and R3 out will happen. It means R3 will give the address. MAR, it means the address is read in MAR. Then R3 has given the address 1008. At 1008, the value is read now. It means this 20 is now in MDR. Now, R1 out will happen. It means now addition has to be performed. So R1 is having the value 10. Then it will go on this bus and Y in. Y in is happening for MDR. MDR will give the next value. It means that is the value for R3 register. So R3 data is here now. And on B through this R1 the data will come. It means R3 value is here in MUX and MUX will give only one output. So R3 value is here now at the first input of ALU and the second input of ALU is having R1. Now both operands are here. Next the opcode is to be decided. Opcode is add. Control unit will tell to perform the add operation. Now ALU will perform the addition and the resultant will be stored in Z. Before that WMFC is a signal which will wait all of these instructions to be completed. And next I have told you that MDR out will happen. It means R3's data will go out and it will be given to Y register. This will be added and the result will be given to Z. Now Z is the temporary register where the results of ALU is stored. But this is not the place where result has to be stored. According to this instruction, the result must be stored on R1 register. So this Z has to give out the value and R1 will read this value. So this was the control sequence or you can say execution of complete cycle for this example. Hope you have understood this. Otherwise, you can repeat this again. Theoretically, I have written all of these here. You can take note of this. This is the same thing which I told in the previous slide. Next, we will see references. I have seeken help from this NPTEL IT Gohati video. Then for notes, I have taken note from University of Babylon notes and I have used Morris Menno and William Stalling book to understand this topic. Thank you. Hope you learned something new from this video.